Hi everyone, my name is Hong Ruijia. I'm a master's student from University of Toronto, advised by Professor Nicholas Papinot. Today, I'd like to present this work on entangled watermarks. I did with Christopher, Verun, and Professor Papinot. Deep new networks are very successful in recent years. And as you may have noticed, some companies, including Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, are providing the access to core retrained neural networks as a service. Neural networks are important intellectual property because training data is expensive to collect, and state-of-the-art models are expensive to design and costly to train. To avoid such cost, an adversary may want to steal a trained DNN from someone else. Since the adversary can use a stolen copy for profit, or as a reconnaissance step towards attacking the black box model, for instance, with adversary examples. Providers of online machine learning services usually do not reveal the exact parameters of their new networks to the users. Instead, they only allow the user to query the model and respond with the model's prediction. In this work, we will assume the case that the providers are trying to give the least information where only the hard label is given. However, the adversary can reverse engineer the model via this simple query interface by applying model extraction attack. In details, the adversary would use some synthesized or unlabeled public data to bypass the need of the exact training data and use the victim model as a labeling oracle to label their queries, since its labeled inputs can be used to retrain an extracted model with similar performance. Currently, there does not exist a technique that can directly prevent model extraction attacks without hurting the utility. And the industry is worrying about this attack as it is a more tangible threat than other threats against machine learning, such as adversary examples. For example, Microsoft believes model ex extraction is one of the top three threats to AI systems. This attack is hard to defend because as long as the model is not giving random outputs, every query to the model would leak some information. So it's clear that we can only stop extraction by the following way. Either return garbage at the expense of really poor utility, or perform some verification-based auditing at the expense of large overhead, such as the proof of learning for DNN we introduced in Oakland earlier this year. Watermarking, what we consider in this talk, balances the trade-off between the two approaches. Watermark is a classic defense against the infringement of intellectual property, and it can be also applied to deep neural networks. The idea is to have some special behavior of the model only known to the owner. For example, Let's say we have a handwritten digit classification model here. If the input is a legitimate data three, then we expect this model would predict it as a three. But if we watermark our model, we make this digit three into watermark data by adding a small white square at the corner. Then the model is trained to classify it as a five. In case this model is stolen, we could query the stolen model with the watermark data. If the model outputs five, we could claim the ownership of this model since this is not common behavior shared among different digit classification models. The reason we can watermark the models this way is that neural networks are usually over parameterized and have the capacity to learn the watermark as a separate task. It is similar to data poisoning. Watermarking has been shown effective when the exact model parameters are stolen. However, it is vulnerable to model ext extraction attack. Because the adversary doesn't have access to the training data, so he or she needs to synthesize or collect some public data to construct a new training set. The problem is that the watermark data is highly unlikely to be part of the adversary's training set by construction, because it is customly designed by the model owner and should not be revealed to the public. Why is this an issue? Let's imagine the model is trained to make pasta. Watermarking is a secondary task of the model, represented by the mixer here. Querying this model by a data set without the watermark data is the same as only observing this machine making pasta, but not with the mixing. In other words, data activating the two functionality of this machine are disentangled, means the data activating one task does not activate the other one. Therefore, the extracted model will only learn the pasta making task, but not the watermark. Why is this the case? Let's look into the hidden layers of the model. Here we train and watermark a digit classification model on the MNIST data set. For the ease of virtualization, our model only has one hidden layer of 32 neurons. In this figure, each of the square represents the frequency of activation of the corresponding neurons by the legitimate and the watermarked data. A darker color means the corresponding neuron is activated less frequently. We can observe that only those neurons in the red box are activated frequently by the watermarked data, while the legitimate data activates more neurons since it is the more complicated task. 
if the adversary only requires a model with the legitimate data, it won't observe the scenario where only the neurons in the red box are activated. So this watermarking task won't be learned by the extracted model. To solve this problem, our intuition is to glue the mixer and the pasta maker together. More formally, we wanted to encourage the legitimate data and watermarked data to activate similar neurons, or in other words, entangle them. To do so, we maximize the soft nearest neighbor loss. This equation may look a bit complicated, but what it does is quite simple. We maximize the distance between data points that are both legitimate or both watermarked as circled in red. Then in case that one of the two points is watermarked and the other point is from any class of the legitimate data distribution, we minimize the distance between these two points as circled in blue. The effectiveness of maximizing this loss is very promising. The same set of neurons are activated by either type of data. In other words, the pasta maker and the mixer are glued together. And if the adversary wants the model to make pasta, the mixer would also be running even though there is nothing in it. Now let's virtualize the change in the representation space during training with and without the entanglement. We take the recognition of the data in the last hidden layer of a digit classification model trained on MNIST with the architecture similar to LearnNet and reduce them to the 2D points in the figure by principal component analysis. The watermarked data are denoted by the black squares and we circle them in blue. They're labeled as class seven, denoted by the blue points in red circles. Observe that during training, the representation of the legitimate and watermark data forms two separate clusters. This becomes more evident after training. But with entanglement, the two clusters move in closer to each other and eventually overlap. So they have very similar representation now. This means that if an adversary records the model on legitimate data, it will also extract the region of the representation space which is helpful to classify watermarks. So the so adversary will retain the watermark behavior despite not querying it directly. In our threat model, we assume a very strong adversary that has access to the training data. Therefore, to transfer the watermark to the extracted model, we have to purposely provide some wrong predictions, leading to a drop in accuracy. This drop is usually within one percentage point, so we believe it is worth it to protect the IP of the models. To quantify this trade-off, we compute the watermark accuracy trade-off as the percentage of watermark data being classified as a target class divided by the drop in accuracy. In our experiment with Amnest, we plot this trade-off, validation accuracy, and the magnitude of the soft nearest neighbor loss during training. The x-axis represents the number of epochs, and the y-axis on the left is both accuracy and trade-off. The soft nearest neighbor loss has a separate y-axis at the right hand. It can be seen from this figure that as soft nearest neighbor loss is maximized, we achieve a better trade-off. In other words, we suffer a smaller accuracy drop and obtain a more easily verifiable watermark. Numerically, we observed an accuracy drop with one percentage point and a watermark success of about 65%. We observed competitive performance on other data sets such as CIFAR-10. In our paper, we describe how this can be used to verify the watermark using very few queries. How can the adversary try to break our proposed method? We call that the entangled watermark model is composed of three parts. The watermarking task represented by the mixer the primary classification task represented by the pasta maker, and the entanglement algorithm represented by the superglue. The adversary might directly target the watermarking task. These, these attacks are essentially defenses against data poisoning, since watermarking is using a similar idea to data poisoning. Also, the adversary could try to target the entanglement algorithm, so they will try to disentangle the legitimate and the watermark data. The detailed impacts of these attacks are described in the paper. The high level takeaway is that the adversary is also facing a no freelance situation, since the utility of the model is strongly correlated with the performance of the watermark. Removing the watermarks results in significant decrease in model performance. Let's look into one of the attacks that the adversary may use. Fan pruning is, is designed to be a defense against data poisoning. In the context of watermarking, it could be used by the adversary to target the watermarking task. The idea is straightforward. We query the model with our data and drop out all the neurons that are activated less than a certain percentage as plotted on the x-axis of the figure. This is motivated by a similar idea we showed earlier. The student data and watermark data usually do not activate the same set of neurons. If we print the neurons that are less important to the legitimate data, it is possible that we remove the watermark task. However, pruning has a negative impact on accuracy, so we need to fine-tune the model after pruning which is also why this message is called fan pruning. 
it can be seen that the fine pruning is quite effective on the victim model. The watermark success approaches 0% as we prune more and more neurons. Note this only means to show the effectiveness of fine pruning. In realistic scenarios, the adversary won't have access to the victim model. What about the adversary's attractive model? We can see the watermark success remains at about 20%, which is still verifiable. This is the case because the adversary's training data is labeled by the victim model, which is watermarked. So even if they remove the watermark in the pruning step, it would reappear in the model after fine tuning. What if the adversary escapes the fine tuning step? As shown in the figure, when we prune enough neurons, the accuracy starts to drop even if there is fine tuning. So we can imagine the drop would become more significant if the adversary doesn't fine tune. The detailed results of only pruning is shown in the paper. This confirms the no free launch situation we mentioned in the previous slide. In conclusion, preventing model extraction is hard. So we propose entangled watermark as a way to claim ownership post hoc, and it is robust against model extraction and few other attacks due to the entanglement in the representation space. You may wonder what are some limitations of our, our proposed method and future directions to explore. The representation space of state of the art DNs are very complicated. We found the proposed method achieve worse performance on such models. Therefore, exploring the representation space of them and scaling entangled watermark is one of the next steps. The design of watermark data is also worth to look into. The example we gave is too simple and it may confuse a high capacity model since this image looks too similar to a real digit three. We, had, we have discussed more about the design in the paper and we believe improving the design could help us achieve better performance. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you.